Okay, this is the uh, law of sines here, which is going to be part of our trig unit. Um, this one, along with the law of cosines, um, and there's also a law of tangents that isn't really as popular, but it's out there. Um, these are going to be used for um, non-right triangles, so um, they don't really have a hypotenuse or that kind of thing. So it's more of a um, just a, a general triangle. So let's kind of talk about where it comes from. And basically, this is just some any generic triangle. Um, side lengths are the lowercase a, b, and c, and then the angle opposite them are the capital a, b, and c. Um, and, w and to see what's going on here, you need to imagine if we were to drop um, an altitude right down the middle here, and I'm just going to call the length of that h, that's kind of the height of the triangle. Um, what it does is it forms two, two right triangles. So there's one over here. Um, let me highlight a little bit just so we can see what's going on. So there's a, there's a right triangle here. And then there's a second right triangle, um, this one actually on the right. Okay. And now since those are both right triangles, they both have a hypotenuse. So the one on the left, the hypotenuse is A, um, and the one on the right, the hypotenuse is C. Um, so let's let's start thinking about those separately. Um, now that they're right triangles, you can use the Sokatoa stuff. So if I were to write um, an expression for um, in relationship to angle C, over here, I could say that the sine of angle C would equal the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So in that triangle, the opposite side is H, and the um, hypotenuse is lowercase a. Okay. In the other triangle on the right there, if I were to use um, angle A here, the sine of angle A, same kind of thing. The opposite in that triangle is H, and the hypotenuse is C. So just doing a little algebra, just if I were to multiply both sides in the top one by a, or just just to get the h by itself, um, I would have the a times the sine of c equals h. And similarly down here, multiplying by c, I would get c times the sine of a equals h. And then what we can do is if, if both of these things equal h, we can just set them equal to each other. Okay, so, so that thing's going to have to be equal to that. And that makes us have an equation like a times the sine of c equals c times the sine of a. And then just a little trick here just to get it, the, the law of sines the way it's written is algebraically we can divide both sides by c and a. And just notice that's lowercase c, it's the side length c, it's not the angle c. Um, and what that does is, is those two cancel. Um, and that A would cancel that A. Again, this capital C it does not get canceled, um, but it kind of gives us this relationship of sine C over lowercase C equals sine A over lowercase A. And it can also be shown very similarly that sine of angle B over lowercase B is also true. So you get these three ratios that are equal, and that's kind of the um, common way to see the law of sines. Um, it, it may be helpful or you, it may come up where um, you see them as each of their reciprocals. So let me just write, let me start with A. So A over sine A equals B over sine B, which also equals C over sine of C. And you'll normally just use two of the three um, ratios in a given problem and set up a proportion, but you can, all three of them work this way. So um, let's see it in use, okay, kind of see what we're, what we're talking about. So here's the triangle. We want to find an angle. Um, so again, first thing I'm looking at this, I don't know it's a right angle. That, that angle B may be a 90 degree angle. It might be close, but we don't know. So we're going to have to use law of sines. I can't do any Sokotoa stuff here. Um, and so we are, of course, looking for this angle measure right here. So what I would do here with the law of sines, what you're looking for is, is matching um, an angle and its opposite side together. Okay, so the 59 degrees goes with the 19. The side that we want, it's opposite from the nine yard um, side length. So we can set this up any way we want. So I'm gonna set it up. Usually I start with the one where we know both pieces, which are the ones circled in yellow there. I know that the sine of 59 degrees over the opposite side, over 19, must equal the sine of the angle, which we're calling capital C, over nine yards. 
and now you just have a little uh, proportion that you can solve. You can do cross multiplying. Um, in this case, since the thing we want is in the numerator, I would actually just multiply both sides by 9. And you just need to be careful on your calculator. It's 9 times the sine of 59. You're going to want to have a close parenthesis after that 59. Okay, because you're only taking the sine of 59. Not, the divided by 19 is not part of the sine. Okay, so that's just multiplying both sides by 9. So let's do that on the calculator. Um, make sure you are in uh, degree mode here. Okay, so I'll go into your mode. Um, you'll see the third row there, fourth row. Radians or degrees. When you're doing triangle problems, um, pretty much always going to be in degrees. We'll do some other applications with radians and then calculus and stuff. Radians is a bigger deal. Um, but at this point, we're still just talking triangle. So degrees. So we want to do 9 times the, um, let me look at my numbers again, sine of 59. And notice how it opens a parenthesis. Close that up. Make sure you do that. Divide by 19. Okay, And that's going to be the, that's what we were calling the sine of angle C. Okay, so that's not our final answer yet, um, but in order to solve for C, we would take the inverse sine of that number. So just like when you were finding angles earlier with Sokotoa, so I'm going to go second sine, let's just throw that whole previous answer right in there, and this should be our C value, right around 23.96, right around 24. Okay, let's look at another one. Um, again, this one looks like it might be a right triangle. I can... I kind of tell actually with the angles um, that were given, those two add up to 93, so angle A would not be 90, um, even though it looks close to it. But in this case, we want to find side AB, okay, which is this over here on the, on the left. I'm going to label that lowercase c since it's opposite, capital C, um, and we should be able to just set up our, our ratios very similarly. Um, in this case, though, look at the side they gave us um, is... It's across from that angle. So we need to know that angle to set up the ratio. Okay, if I was going to use the 51 degree angle, I would have to know this side down here. Okay, so let's just find real quick what that, that third angle is. Again, we know the angle sums 180. Um, so if I did 180 minus 51 minus 42, um, that's actually going to be an 87 degree angle. And that's the one that can now get paired up with the... Um, the nine meters. So there's my first ratio. The second one again, since I want I want side C, I'm going to use the sine of 42 degrees over C. Okay, let's do the cross multiply here. Um, C times the sine of 87 degrees. Okay, so that's that times that must equal nine times sine of 42. Okay, and we will just, uh, to get C by itself, divide both sides by the sine of 87. Okay, and again, parentheses are a must around that 42. Okay, so if we, if we calculate that 9 times the sine of 42, close the parentheses, divide by the sine of 87, I'm getting an answer around 6.03. Okay, so those are just your, you know, set up the proportions. One of them we showed finding an angle, one finding a side. Um, now with this, there's um, there's what's called this ambiguous case, and let's let's set this one up. They didn't even give us a picture, so the way I always do this, I just draw like a gen generic triangle. I don't really care what the if it looks like the right size or anything, but um, and I'm just going to label A, B, and C really wherever I want. So just come up with some way that works for you. And then, of course, the opposite side lengths are going to be the lowercase letters. And then we'll just fill in what they gave us. Um, angle B is 126 degrees. Side A, so the lowercase a, is 35. Um, side B is 34. And then side C is the one we want to find. Okay. Um, so you might be looking at this thinking, you know, I know two of the three sides. You know, Pythagorean theorem. Remember, Pythagorean is only true for right triangles only. Okay, This is not necessarily a right triangle. In fact, we know it's not. There's a 126-degree angle. So 
what we need to do, we might have to do a couple steps. Um, why don't we find actually the um, angle A, I think we can find first, right? Because what I'm looking at again, which ones do we know? That there's, there should be one where you know like a matching a pair. Like those two are opposites of each other. So I'm going to start with those. But then since I, I only know this one, I could find that angle. And then once I know the second angle, then we should be able to find the third angle C, and then we'll find side C. So we got a couple steps here. So I know that the sine of 126 over 34 must equal the sine of A over 35. Okay, so again, if we multiply both sides by 35, You get in the habit of putting parentheses around the angles. That's going to give me the sine of A. Okay, so let's do that. 35 times the sine of 126. If I divide that answer by 34, I'm going to get up around a point 8328. Okay, and then again, doing inverse sine of that number, just like the first example. I'm getting A is approximately 56.38 degrees, 39 if we round. Okay, so let's see what would angle C then have to be. If I took my 180 minus the 126 that we was the first one we know, minus the 56.39 that we just got, I'm actually getting a negative number over here, right? Again, I know the angle sum has to be 180. So, so 56.39 plus the 126 plus angle C had to be 180. When I solved that, um, you know, these two together already added up more to more than 180. Okay, it's actually like a C would end up being like negative 2.39 or something. Okay, if that happens, something's wrong. We have no triangle here. This thing doesn't even have a solution. Um, and sometimes that happens, sometimes they give you um, things that just don't work, okay? And, and this is why this is ambiguous. Um, we'll see in a second, and this, it is also possible in these to get two triangles that would work, okay? And there's a certain case where that would happen, okay? And I'll, I'll mention that as that comes up. Sometimes you get one solution, sometimes you get none, like we just did. Um, sometimes you get two. Okay, so let's take a look at another example here. Let's, let's draw a picture. Um, again, just filling in just a generic picture of a triangle. I always seem to do them like this. Um, the information given, we have an 89 degree angle. Um, angle B is 34 degrees. Side A, which is going to be up here, right, is 25. <coughs> okay, so this is the old... Uh, if you go back to your geometry days, remember side, 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 angle, side, angle, angle, side, all that stuff. Um, this is technically the angle, angle, side. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Um, we should actually know what the um, the third angle would be, right? If, if I do 180 minus 89 minus 34, that should get us angle C up there. And in this case, I'm getting, oops, typed it in wrong, 57 degrees. Okay, so 57 degrees up there. We need to find side B. Okay, so I need to find over here. And let's see what we got. So let's set up our our ratio here um, now that I look at this do we even really need angle C let's see I don't I don't know that we did um, again I would kind of with 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 these problems I want to see do I have any sort of combo of an angle and the side across from it and then we already knew the angle that we needed right I was thinking we needed the the bottom side for some reason but um, anyways we don't really need it so let's set this up this should be just like just ones we've we've done before um, sine of 89 degrees um, over 25 is going to have to equal the sine of 34 degrees over B. 
Okay, and this one we should be able to just do our cross multiplying very similar to the old one we did. Um, so b times the sine. I'm just multiplying both sides by b here. Okay, so just other options of doing the algebra. If, if you wanted to cross multiply that, that would work too, of course. Um, and I'm just going to do what this in parentheses here that the sine of 89 divided by 25. So I just kind of did a, a, a quick calculator break here and, and figured out what this is, just some number, right? Um, so so that's really just going to be b times, let me write the value first. It's, it's really like 0 0.03999 times b. And I'll just divide both sides by that decimal. Um, so I'm going to take the sine of 34 degrees divided by that decimal to get B. It's going to be canceled. B is going to be approximately, if we do sine 34, divide by that previous answer, I'm getting around 13.98. Okay, so this one was really nothing new. I think it's the, the next one's going to have the uh, more ambiguous um, case to it, kind of like the previous one with no solution. <clears throat> so here's the deal. Here's the special one to watch for. Um, they're giving us, uh, again, some information. Okay, let's draw a triangle out, A, B, C. Okay, and they're giving me angle A, 61 degrees down here, side C, so which is the bottom, right, 35. And they're giving me side A, which is 32. So here's what I was talking about with the side, 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 angle, side. Um, this one is basically angle side side okay so in order to be in order to be side angle side I would need to know something like I would need to know this side this side and the angle in between the two okay that's not what we have the two sides that we're given I don't know the angle in between the two I don't know angle B so it's not side angle side think about more of the order this one's more like angle side side and I don't really want to write the letters down, um, you know, <laughs> because think about what that uh, what that says. And this is supposed to be a, uh, a nice clean video. Um, this one's sometimes known as the donkey theorem. So you guys can think about that a little bit. But anyways, when that happens, if it's angle side side, that's when you really got to watch for this ambiguity. So let's let's set something up. Okay, here's the thing. Um, I'm seeing again like one set of values I can use, right? There's an there's an angle and there's a side across from it, right? Okay, so if we do that, I know I'm going to be doing something with the sine of 61 over 32. Okay, the thing we need to find, our goal is actually to find this. So before we find that, we would need this, but that's the problem. I don't know either one of those. So I'm going to have to find C first, angle C. So I do know that the sine of whatever angle C is over 35. Okay, so this angle over 35 is going to be a step we have to do, right? So if we do that, if we multiply both sides by, um, by 35, so let me just save a little uh, board space here. If I times both sides by 35, That'll be canceled out. So doing the calculation there, 35 times the sine of 61 degrees um, divided by 32, I'm getting around 0.9566 equals the sine of C. So that tells me that C, when I do the inverse sine on both sides, so inverse sine of the answer that's already in your calculator, I'm getting around 73.06. Okay, so that's that's a possibility for angle C. Okay, here's the problem. When you are given the angle side side like we had, and we set this up, and we've done everything right so far, um, we could, we could go and finish this, and we could find angle B and then do the law of signs again, which we're going to do in a minute. But what you need to think about, um, and it depends on how much you remember the from the unit circle and whatnot, um, 
let me highlight this this is our key step once we got here and we found C there's actually another angle that has a sign of 0.9566 okay let me, let me let me verify here so if we take the step I did was uh, inverse sine of 0.9566 right and we got that answer Okay, so the sine of 73.06 equals the nine, the point nine five six six. Okay, here's the thing. If you remember from the um, unit circle, or if it's been a while or whatnot, just here's just a real brief thing. The the sine here, this is like a 73 degree angle, roughly, right? There'd be a triangle right here, and there'd be my angle. Okay, and that would the sine of that angle would be the point nine five six six. Okay, the from the unit circle, the sine is actually just the y coordinate on this unit circle. Okay, so there's another point out here that has the same y coordinate as this point. So there's also another angle, this red angle also has a sign of 0.9566, this bigger red angle here. And so what we need to do is take the answer that we got, the 73 degree angle, if I take 180 minus that, that's the measure of the red angle. Okay, it's about 106.94. Now watch, the sine of that angle is also going to be 0.9566. So the sine of 73 is 0.9566. And also the sine of the 106 is the same thing. So what that tells us, um, is that this, um, 106.94 is also a possibility for C. Okay. Cause both of them would solve the highlighted equation.